I'm going to use an example from the React Router tutorial. This is the second example in the quick start. I've just copied and pasted it here into a Create React app. And you can see how it works. We're able to go to a different, different routes, and these different routes are each tied to the component tree. A problem that I have with this approach is it represents routes as plain strings. So there's a lot of room for typos here. If we misspell about here in the link, you can see we get some unexpected behavior. When we click on the link, it won't change. Likewise, we can misspell it in the render logic, and we get a similar result. Among other things, FPTS routing solves this problem. Here, I'm going to copy and paste the code from the final tutorial in this series. And you can see it's the same thing using FPTS routing instead. The advantage here is that instead of representing our routes as plain strings, we represent them with a sum type. So if we misspell something, we get a type error, and it fails to compile. That's in the link. Likewise, in our render logic, if we misspell something, we get a type error. Another advantage of using a sum type is that with type inference, you get a list of the possible different routes that you might want to use. Finally, this is really cool. When we add a new route, don't worry, I'll explain all of this later, how this works. When we add a new route, like we expect, if we want to add a link to it, it's been added to our list of possible routes in our sum type. Additionally, you can see that we have a type error here. That's because we haven't handled the new route in our component logic. TypeScript is smart enough to infer that that's the route that we're missing, and we can return a React component accordingly. Whoops, I need to change the label. Now we can go to our new route. You can see how powerful FPTS routing is, but we've only scratched the surface of what it's able to do. Hopefully this tutorial makes you excited to continue the rest of the series.